Bonjour from Paris, city of love, light and long bread. Formula E rolls into town this weekend, so obviously we had to be here too. Here are three reasons you need to get involved. This race is one of the most central circuits Formula E has to offer, so you get to see this fantastic city from a unique point of view. Last year, due to its tight corners and narrow straights, the Parisian Formula E was up there with one of the most dramatic of the season. After a win in Rome for Virgin Sandberg, there is just an 18 point gap between first and second place. Looks like it's going to be Sandberg. He takes victory in the first Rome E Prix. And with so many others hot on their heels, this race could dramatically change the outcome of the overall championship. Bring it on. Formula E have kindly brought us out to Paris and this is our guide to some of the hidden gems in this amazing city. With over 40 square kilometers in Paris to cover and a hell of a lot of sights, you could walk, you could take the metro or take one of these. The French definitely know their food. Snails, frogs, legs, and also cheese and potato. If you've taken the inside to Paris, you've had your cheese and potato. How about going to a former squat to check out some art? Of course, when it comes to the evening, there are plenty of places around Paris that you can go for a drink at, or you could pick a laundromat. And if all else fails, just go to your local bar and get a glass of local red. Sante. Welcome to the track walk. We are here with all of the professional drivers examining every single inch of the track before the drivers get in their car and do the shakedown. Check this out. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this corner. This is actually a very tricky corner. You come like accelerating and turning at the same time. Then you have to brake and turn at the same time. And if you miss this corner by let's say three or four kilometers per hour, you're gonna lose a couple of tenths. So that's the difference of being on pole position or being 10th on the grid. First of all, it's an overtaking opportunity. In the braking zone here, you have a lot of bumps, which is super easy to lock up and go straight, which of course you don't want to do. You will always be super close to that wall or to that barrier, and actually it always feels like you're going to hit it, but somehow you just manage to not do it. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one where you can gain or lose a lot of time. It's a very tricky corner actually because you've got many things going on in this circuit. It's very bumpy, there's a lot of track surface changes. These areas where they've put like a, a, a sealant on it to patch things up, which is your standard thing. If you think of your roads at home, exactly yeah. that. They're patched more than velvety smooth and that doesn't have grip, especially if it's wet. Streets racing is very fast and furious, very difficult and it's very different every single year because the circuit changes just minutely from year to year because of changes of tarmac, changes of you know, pavement or whatever it is, but uh, we love it, absolutely love it. Apt victorious in Mexico! Hey guys, my name is Daniel Apt and today I'm going to show you the important people of my team and how it looks like in our garage. Let's go. We really have to make sure we use the right people and what you have, what, what I have here are my two mechanics that are super important, not just because they set up the car, but also because they do the pit stop. So they have to buckle me in when I do the pit stop, which is a key part of Formula E. That's Flo. Do you, do you want to say hi? Hi. What are you doing now? We need the brakes. Sounds very interesting, huh? Yeah, that's Timo, my chief mechanic. You, you, you race this weekend for me? Or? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not good enough. <laughs> but he's very quick at pit stop, so that's that's a good thing. But yeah, it's very important to have good mechanics because I mean, the car is your tool, and if the car is not set up correct, um, you're not going to be quick. Over here is Eric. He's my third mechanic. All busy now, so uh, that's good. 
or maybe not so good for them, but good for me, then the car is good. That's Johnny. Hello. So it's mainly organization, you know, making sure that all the people are in the right place, have their time schedule, that everything uh, works well, all the communication with the FIA. What's, what's your job on the weekend? Yeah, mainly to keep you under control, actually. <laughs> that's true. He's responsible for all the setup, uh, everything that's getting put in the car goes through him. He talks to all the other engineers that are in the back. There's a lot more engineers that do data, that do systems. But yeah, as you see, my key team is very small. But just to give you an idea of what Formula E is about, you know, it's, it's a small group of people trying to maximize the outcome on the weekend. It's a one-day event. Everyone needs to know what to do. But my guys are good. Uh, I have full trust and respect for them and uh, hopefully this weekend we can have a good one. It's race day here in Paris and in just a few hours time there are going to be loads of Formula E cars on the streets driving hundreds of kilometers an hour. Idris Elba, how the hell are you? I'm really good man, I'm super excited at the moment, adrenaline through the roof. You just drove a Formula E car, how was it? Yeah, it was amazing man, I, I thought I was worrying if I was going to spang it around the corner or spin it out and I didn't do any of that and I had a great time driving it. I love driving but I love that car man, it was wicked. Your co-star in Thor, Chris Hemsworth, did spin it out and crash. Does that make you just far better than him in every single way? Every single capacity. He's got bigger muscles than me but oh well, he can't drive. Sorry Chris. <laughs> if you were doing the advert for Formula E because it's a fairly new sport, what would you say to bring new fans on board? People are sort of worried about, oh I love engines and all that. It's the same sort of vibe, you know, it's a good vibe here. So many people are moving towards electric cars at the moment so that's a great Things. But if you love engines as well, you're going to love Formula E as well, I think, because of the speed. Ten minutes before the race begins, and as you can see, I am on the track amongst the cars and plenty of fans as well. Let's find out what the drivers have had to say now that they've qualified. Lucas Degrassi, how are you feeling now just before the race? Feeling good. Uh, we had a tough qualifying. Qualified six for this race, so the race is going to be pretty tough, but uh, yeah, that, that we have to move forward. Well, obviously not satisfied with my qualifying, starting quite far at the back and it's a tricky track to overtake, but um, yeah, all, all is possible, you know, I mean, I don't have much to lose now, full focus on the race, I'm gonna, gonna push hard. All five lights are on and we go green in Paris and it's a decent start from Bird, but I think it was pretty clean from Bird as well. Degrassi up the inside, past Sam Bird, to Jean-Eric Bird, the Parisian wins in Paris! Yeah, merci à tous, merci.